Isaac Grace. Um, we just finished up our community event, Bridging the Gap, here at Lakewood Community Center. It was an amazing event, you know. Um, I learned new things today. Um, it felt really good to accomplish, you know, something that I wanted to get done and um, bring that platform, you know, to the people so that, you know, people could um, and be inspired to learn more. Um, I think a couple people may sign up for the academy, so um, that was the win in today, getting people to get closer to bridging that gap. You know, I just want to thank everybody who came out. Appreciate your time, and we have many more to come. Uh, my name is Ricardo Barreto uh, from Parsippany, New Jersey. I just came here to Isaac Grace and uh, Jay Morrison's uh, seminar that they had here in Lakewood. Uh, my testimonial, or what I walked away from today, was um, that we must continue forward. Uh, we can't waste the time. There's a sense of urgency for us to uh, build that um, wealth gap uh, between ourselves and everybody else. Um, and, um, you know, just can't stop. And that's what I walk away with today. Um, and I hope that everyone gets the message. Everyone here got the message and uh, they can use it uh, for themselves and their, their loved ones. Because um, we have no time to waste. Um, and, I mean, I would recommend anybody to, you know, watch Jay Morrison's. Uh, his, his YouTube videos, go on, uh, follow him on Facebook, uh, and read what he's about because um, he's doing something positive not just for himself, but for all of us. And, uh, you know, it, it's for the better. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's it. So, we're going to go into these facts. And um, so, the first one wealth, the medium income of African American households is 34600 nearly 24000 less than the medium income of white households. A typical black household has accumulated less than one-tenth of the wealth of a typical white one. Over the past 25 years, the wealth gap between blacks and whites has nearly tripled. Tripled. The medium income for black households is less than 60% of that of white ones. More than one, more than one in four blacks live in poverty, poverty while fewer than one in ten whites do. A little bit of facts on home ownership. The black home ownership rate in 2012 is no different from what it was in 1976. That's sad. That's sad. The medium net worth of a white household is 13 times the level for black households. Incarceration stats. According to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, Black men were more than six times as likely as white men to be incarcerated in 2010. In 2010, the incarceration rate for white women was 91 per 100,000 white residents. For black women, it was 260 per 100,000. African Americans served virtually as much time in prison for drug offenses, 58.7 months, as whites do for violent offenses, 61.7 months. One in four black men has been incarcerated, one in five black men has been in college. Half of the black women in America are head of household and half of them live with their children in poverty. So I hope that that wakes us up. You know, um, I'm gonna leave this up. If y'all wanna take these notes down, we'll be able to email them to y'all. I read this every morning, these stats right here, because when I, when I listen to it, it makes me wanna do something, you know? So, this is the stats. Jay Morrison's gonna come on. I suggest all y'all get a pen or pencil, get your notebooks out. And a lot of this information is great. And give a round of applause for Jay Morrison. I'm gonna give my all in this. Um, but I'm really inspired by He's told me a story, like, you know, personally and in private, you know, kind of sitting in this truck and just talking one time. Um, didn't know all the, all the details, but I, I told him why. I support him um, so much is that his story mirrors mine, um, you know, so so much, so parallel. I mean, even though I didn't know the football story from Pop Warner, but it reminds me of, I remember being in Pop Warner, wanting to play quarterback. I actually was the quarterback, but uh, it was where I was selling drugs. I was, I had selling drugs in Somerville, New Jersey, and I was also moving coke down to Baltimore at 17. Um, so, so many parts of this story is so parallel to mine from two different places. He's 22 and I'm 35. So it shows you a lot about where this wealth gap is so, is so relevant. So I wanted to try to buy my first four family house. And again, 
not getting multiple opinions. Um, as I'm getting my inspection for this four family house, right, it's four units, they're all section eight. I'd bring in like 3,200 a month in cash flow uh, in Irvington, New Jersey. Um, I'm getting my inspection and the inspector says that there's a, a bent joist beam in the basement, right? The house is leaning, the joist beam was bent. And so the realtor I had said, oh, you don't want to buy this house because, you know, it's a foundational issue. And so I canceled that deal. Um, come to find out later on, I would learn that if if there is a situation or when there is a situation that a joist beam is bent in the basement, you simply go to Home Depot and pay like 300 bucks and get a jacket and you could just jack it up. And so I lost out on that deal in that same house that I was going to buy, a Ford family, that I was going to buy for 189000 end up selling for like three oh five a couple years later. But me listening to the opinion of just one realtor, we didn't know what he was selling about. So that deflated me, right? I was going to buy that crib, I couldn't buy it, I went back to the street, started hustling again. Right. So I'm like 22, 23 at the time, and I would continue to sell drugs again, um, just going through the ranker, just just hustling um, until 25. I would catch another close call where, again, so every time I would go to prison or be out of the game, I would think about how can I perfect my my hustle, right? How can I sell drugs without getting caught? That's the every drug dealer's goal. <laughs> like, how do you sell drugs without getting caught? That a lot of times we get in our own way and we make up excuses for ourselves as to why we can't, why we can't, instead of how can we. It should always be how can I. It should never be I can. It should be how can I, what can I do. And so there's ways to build your credit, ways to restore your credit if it's messed up. It's like all those things have these components. If you don't, so here's some, here's some tips on home ownership in general. Because once you start with home ownership, what it allows you to do that one asset, that one property, you then can use that property over time and the equity from that property to go buy other properties. Or to refinance and pull tax free money out and start your own business or whatever the case is. Just one house. And so, our tips for just even buying your first house is one, for those of you, maybe you don't have a job or you don't make enough money or whatever the case is, is that a majority of loans you can have more than one co bar. You can have multiple co bars. And now, Imagine what you're passing to your daughter or your son 20 years from now, 15 years from now, 10 years from now. If you got three properties that are building value over time, and you got 70,000 equity in this one, 120,000 equity in this one, 30,000 equity in this one, you start to build real well. But um, by a show of hands, who here lives somewhere? Not too funny? <laughs> Everybody lives somewhere. If you got to live somewhere, you might as well live somewhere in which you also. Oh.